this is Carrie with Everwood Creations, and we are going to be continuing our beginner's guide to using Vetric VCAR for use with our CNC. Today we are continuing our look at the drawing tools available to us in Vetric VCarve. I am using Vetric VCarve Pro version 9.5, but everything should be similar if you have desktop or newer versions. In the previous part, we discussed the closed shape tools, but now we will move on to making lines with the draw line or polyline, draw arc, and draw curve tools. The draw line tool is also known as the polyline tool. Polyline is a term used in computer graphics that refers to a continuous line that is made of one or more segments by specifying the endpoints of each segment. When we select the polyline tool, we get a cursor that allows us to begin plotting the points of the line we want to create. In this dynamic mode, we can simply click on each point we want the line to contain and it will automatically connect them. The points can be used as close together or as far apart as you wish. Each point gives us the opportunity to change the direction of the line either subtly or dramatically depending on the location of the next point. If you click on a point already used, the software will close the shape and turn it into a vector object. If you wish the shape to remain open, you can hit the spacebar, which will finish the line with the last point you made and give you a cursor to begin a new line. You can also right click after your last point, which will finish the line and take you out of the polyline tool altogether. The same thing happens if you hit the escape key. You can use the keyboard to get exact distances between your points. Once you have a starting point, simply move the cursor in the direction you wish the line to go and type the number to indicate the distance you want the next point to be. So you see I can move the mouse at this angle and type 6, Hitting enter creates a point six inches from the last point in the direction where my cursor was. The properties box allows you to enter exact coordinates of points and the software will draw the line using those coordinates. If I enter the starting point at zero zero and hit add point, you see that nothing really happens. But if I add another point at two zero, you can see that it now draws a line between those two points. This is a very effective way at creating precise lines on your material. You can even mix and match the dynamic drawing in manually entering coordinates as you see fit or as needed. The additional boxes here are a bit more complicated. If you start drawing a line in dynamic mode, you will see the cursor position values here change as you move the mouse across the material. So manually entering an X and Y coordinate will give you a point to start with. Then we can either add the XY coordinate for the next point, or we can use one of these values to reference the first point and create the next one. For example, I have my first point in the center at 0, 0. Now I can use the angle and L fields to tell it I'd like a point 45 degrees up with a length of 3. Then click Add, and it will place my next point 3 inches from the first at an angle of 45 degrees. Not sure how often this is going to get used, but now you know if it comes up or you have the need. The other options down here are DX and DY, and that basically means difference in distance. So if you put a two in DX, it will place the next point two inches away from the previous point on the X axis, which is left to right. The same is true for the dy, except it will move along the y-axis or up and down your screen. You can enter values in both dy and dx if you want the point to move along both axes at the same time. This allows a crazy amount of precision when making your lines, but I'll be honest, I never use the manual options here. Generally, I just click away and make adjustments as necessary in node editing mode. Something you will want to know, if you hit the spacebar to end your line and then realize that you need to add more points to it, you can do so in node editing mode. 
So back in the drawing panel, highlight the line you want to continue, and then hit the Node Editing Mode button. This will show you each of the points you made and allow you to edit them. To continue the line, you just need to right click on the endpoint and select Edit Polyline. This will connect you to that endpoint and put you back in the Draw Polyline tool, allowing you to continue drawing your line just like you could before. Node editing mode also allows you to switch any of the spans you've created to arcs or curves, allowing for even further customization. The potential of the polyline tool is limitless. You can literally make any shape you like. It is perfect for tracing around clip art, any non-symmetrical shapes, and making triangles of any kind. This is the drawing tool that I use the most. Now we come to the draw arc tool. This tool will allow you to draw an arc between two points. There are two options when dynamically drawing an arc. Selecting through three points here allows you to click on two endpoints and then move the mouse to determine the height of the arc between them. This is perfect when you want to seamlessly connect two points with an arc. The second option here is center start end. If you choose this option, you will click the center point first and a guide circle will appear around it. You then choose where your arc should start and stop along the guide circle. This option limits you to a perfect circle of an arc, but allows drawing partial circles with ease. Once the arc is created, you can adjust the height here, just edit the number and hit apply. You can also use this properties box to create an arc manually if you know the coordinates and values you want. So I can tell it to make an arc at 40 and negative 40 with a height of 2 and hit create. To make the arc go up instead of down, I can change the height to negative 2 and hit apply. If I decide I want a deeper arc, I can change the height to negative 4 and get a lovely circular shape. If your goal is to make a complete semicircle, you can exit out of the arc tool and go into node editing mode. Click on the endpoint, and you have two options. You can edit polyline, like we did before, and connect the two ends yourself, or you can choose close vector with a line, and it will automatically close the vector for you. Now let's move on to the draw curve tool. This is an unusual tool in that there is no properties box for manual entry. The point of the tool is to allow you to insert as many points as you want, and it will connect them all with a smooth line. When you are finished placing your points, you can either right click or hit spacebar, and the software will draw the smooth line for you. If you decide a few more points are needed, you can hold down the control key and click on the endpoint to continue the line further. Or you can also click back on your starting point and that closes the shape. The shape you create can be edited in node editing mode. When in that mode, you can see that the software has given you bezier curves between each of your points, which you can easily reshape for a little more precision. For a more detailed look at Bezier Curves in Node Editing Mode, watch our video about that specific tool. I'll link it up top. Now that we've covered each of the tools, let's use them in a practical setting. So here I have a picture of an ice cream cone. You can see if I try to trace the clip art with the bitmap tracing tool, the colors make it a little complicated to get an outline where the scoop and the cone are separate. If I just want a simple outline, I can use our line tools to create it myself. First, I will use the polyline tool to trace the shape of the triangular cone. Then, I will use the arc tool to get a nice round top to the ice cream portion. Finally, we will trace the edge of the cone using the draw curve tool. We just click on each place where the cone changes direction, the highest and the lowest points of the curves, and the software will do the rest.
I'll make a few adjustments to the line in node editing mode to make sure that the shape is close enough to the picture. Then I will join the arc and the curved line with the join tool to create a closed shape. Let's say I plan to v-carve this. So using the offset tool, I will create a channel for the bit to follow. Now I will offset the polyline we used to make the cone by the same amount. I'm going to close it off by entering into node editing mode and selecting edit polyline and then clicking the other end to close it. I will join these two lines and we'll have our second shape for v-carving. Make the v-carve toolpath and you can see that I have a nice outline of an ice cream cone which I created using only the draw line tools. I hope this has given you the confidence to explore the drawing tools for making any shape you like for your carvings. As always, if you have any questions or any tips and tricks of your own for using drawing tools, leave a comment down below and we can all learn together. In future videos we'll be looking at creating textures and working with text so keep an eye out for those and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. And until next time, have fun and stay safe in the shop. <laughs>